So in this video, I just want to show you a couple of tips and tricks for finding symmetry elements in, let's say, wooden blocks or other kinds of objects, uh, maybe natural crystals, for example. So in one video, we introduced this theorem from spherical geometry. So we have 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z should be between 1 and 3, where x, y, and z represent the uh, possibilities of having a two, four, or a three-fold, or a six-fold rotational axis. So for example, we cannot have the combination six, six, two, because we took the sum one over six plus one over six plus one over two, uh, that would be less than one, and so it would not satisfy this inequality here. So that comes out of uh, Euler's um, theorems of, of spherical geometry. Well, there are a couple of other rules that we can use, um, but first I want to show you how this uh, kind of theorem reduces the number of possibilities of combinations we can have. So if we have two, three, four, and six-fold rotational axes, we have four things. Let's say we want to take them three at a time. So we have three intersecting axes like this, an x and a y and a z, like we had in our computational example in the previous slide. So we let's say we could choose from any one of them. We would have four options for the first one, for x, four options for the second, four options for the third. And so out of combinatorics, this tells us that there are 64 possibilities. Well, it ends up that most of those possibilities are either impossible or some of them are going to be repeats of one another, and so we would not count them. We don't have 64 unique possibilities. There are actually only six. The possible trios that satisfy Euler's, Euler's theorem, theorem and are not a repeat of other things that we might write are 2, 2, 2, uh, 3, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, and 6, 2, 2, and then we can have 4, 3, 2, a 2, 3, 3, and that's usually just abbreviated as 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, we've got them all. So these are the six possible compatible trios. Notice that that is a very small subset of the mathematical possibility of taking four things uh, three at a time. So we have a greatly reduced subset in terms of what is possible. So it means that uh, when we are looking for various kinds of symmetry, we can limit ourselves. There's not going to be an infinite number of possibilities. There are a couple of other theorems that can be of help. And so one of them is this. If we have a point that falls along a 2, 4, or 6-fold rotational axis, so a point along A, so if we have a point that is a center of symmetry or an inversion point, which we denote as I, then a mirror plane must be perpendicular to the two, four, or six fold axis. This is a very handy theorem because if you find a two, four, or six fold rotational axis, and let's say you know that somewhere along that line there is a center of symmetry, then you know there has to be a mirror plane. So that's something you can look for. And you might remember one of the tricks about finding a center of symmetry is if you lay a wooden block or a natural crystal down onto some flat table. So let's say there's some table out here and your block is sitting on it. Uh, if, the if the side on top is the inverse of the side of the, the one that is on the bottom, then you do indeed have a center of symmetry. 
So if this body has a center of symmetry and you find a 2, 4, or 6 fold axis, any one of those, then there must be a mirror that is going to be perpendicular to one of those axes. There is another theorem that says the same thing about the one or threefold axes. So let's say, let's put it this way, if uh, a one or a threefold axes have a center of symmetry, or we'll just write it as I in this case, then the one turns into a bar one, and the three turns into a bar three. So in other words, they are roto-inversion axes. So if we have a one or a threefold axis, an odd-numbered axis, then we have the case that uh, if there is a center of symmetry, it must be a bar one or a bar three. There must have that kind of symmetry. And then these can be expanded a little bit further. So for example, let's say we add an I, or a center of symmetry, to something like a 2, 2, 2. Then we get the following. So taking our earlier theorem, if we have a two-fold rotational axis and we add a center of symmetry, then there must be a mirror perpendicular. So we would have a 2 over m, 2 over m, 2 over m. If we take a 3, 2, and that's a shorthand of our 3, 2, 2 that we looked at earlier, then adding an i to a 3, 2, the odd fellow, uh, 3 would become a bar 3, and then we would have a 2 over m. So this becomes that, and that would become that. If we have a 4, 2, 2, and we add a center of symmetry to this object, and they are all even numbers, so we would have a mirror perpendicular to each of those axes. And then we can do the same with a 6, 2, 2. And it'll be a 6 over m, 2 over m, 2 over m. Uh, a 4, 3, 2, you might want to pause here, the video here, and then try to do this yourself. What would a 4, 3, 2 look like? So that would be a mirror perpendicular to the four, the three being odd would become a bar three, and then we would have the even fold axis again would have a mirror perpendicular, so we'd write it as two over m. And then for two three, we'll use our abbreviation for the two three three, we'd have a two over m and then a bar three. So this is the way we generate uh, some of the different kinds of uh, point groups. We have this set of point groups over here to the left, uh, and these can exist, exist uh, perfectly fine just by themselves. But if you found a 2, 2, 2, for example, but you also know that there is a center of symmetry, then there must be mirror planes perpendicular to each of those two-fold axes. Similarly, if you found something that has a four-fold and a two-fold and a two-fold axis, uh, and you also know from the test we spoke of earlier that it has an I or a center of symmetry, then there must be mirror planes perpendicular to all of those. If you have a 3, 2, but then that object has a center of symmetry, then that 3 should also act as a bar 3. So these are things you can look for when looking at uh, wooden blocks or natural crystals.